What's good, beef hounds? I'm Kitchen Raid, and I love beef, but I ain't trying to start none, right? I am aware that I am very small and insignificant, and this video is not about drama. It's about giving you a little context side dish to go with your favorite science-based fitness influences, science-backed claims. I assume that some new affordable EMG machine has come out recently because I've seen a bunch of people making videos where they test exercises and use EMG data to show you which one is gonna help you grow more muscle. And there's big problems with that. EMG results do not necessarily equate to hypertrophy. EMGs are also bad for saying, oh, this exercise is gonna smash your medial head more than your lateral head type of stuff. There are a lot of things that you ought to be aware of before you pay any sort of attention to some YouTuber with an EMG machine and even actual studies that use EMG data as the proof of this or that. Once again, I will preface all this with I am dumb, but stubborn. I too watch a Jeff Nippard video that cites a study that uses EMG and go, okay, brain boy says do it like this. However, I am stubborn enough to keep digging until I actually reach the bottom. And in this case, all these studies I'm reading are using EMG how does that work? And why are we saying that it's a good indicator of insolination? I got to this point because I've bought into a bunch of hippie bullshit in the past, so now I'm probably too skeptical, but my goal is to not fall for any bullshit in the future, or at least choose my bullshit with context. And this one really, really nearly caught me out. So you watch a video, you see it cites a bunch of studies, and you're like, yeah, science, and you're on your way. The thing that made me start thinking something was rotten in Denmark was when this guy, Ryan Hermiston, not sure if that's just how you say his name, sorry if it's wrong, absolute beefcake and straight talking badass was making one of these like backed by science type videos. And he was saying something like, uh, oh, and I couldn't believe it. Uh, all along I've been doing X and it feels really good, but EMG says I should do Y instead. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> you're jacked. And in your sample size of one, you found that doing X gives you a good burn, a good pump, and good gains. Why are you gonna do Y instead? Just because like an expensive machine that you've bought and are trained in, I saw that you got trained, but you got recently, you aren't using professionally, you aren't particularly experienced in, you know, just because that says you should do it otherwise. Why are you ignoring your own experience? So I started looking into why we use EMG data for studies and if it was actually a useful bit of data. Turns out, probably not. <laughs> Turns out to be pretty problematic for a myriad of reasons. So much so that one of the science boys that you see named and cited in a lot of studies, Andrew Vygotsky, I think is how you're saying his name, uh, he's gone from being a proponent of EMG to being quite a loud skeptic. I watched a presentation he gave that I'll link below uh, where he talks about this study where they hook people up to an AMG on their tibialis and then they electrically stimulate the tibialis nerve so the participant isn't flexing the tibialis, the scientists are flexing the tibialis by electrically stimulating the nerve that controls it, like Rambo in Rambo 3. And then they measure using EMG how electrically excited the tibialis is. And even though they put the same amount of electrical stimulus in every time, they get a completely different reading dependent on the joint angle of the ankle. I mean, that pretty much blows the whole thing wide open, doesn't it? If you know that X is going in every time, but you measure W, X, and Y on the output, that's pretty good evidence that the thing you're measuring with is not accurate enough to be able to say that you can tell from X output that X is going in. You get me? And we're talking like a 50% difference here between W, X, and Y outputs. That's a 50% margin of error. And you're gonna trust a study or YouTuber's results that say you get a 10% better activation out of this than that with a 50% margin of error? <laughs> Come on. And that's just one of quite a few issues. So EMG measures the electrical signal that tells the muscle to contract, but it's not measuring the actual contraction, it's measuring the signal. And signal does not equal contraction. It's like signal in, then processes as like a flow chart and some algebra, and then contraction. So imagine you have a screwdriver and you turn that screwdriver 90 degrees, the screw turns 90 degrees. <laughs> that's not what this is. This is like having a mystery geared screwdriver. So you rotate the screwdriver 90 degrees and then depending on the gearbox, whatever's going on there, it could rotate more than 90, it could rotate less than 90. I am not smart enough to tell you what those gearbox processes are. I just know they exist and they are one of the many grains of salt that you should take your EMG data with. 
EMG results are the most robust and reliable when the muscle isn't moving. So like isometric contractions give you the strongest reading and that reading is most reliable because there's no velocity involved. The muscle contraction is a more simple process, less algebra. <laughs> So you see those high readings on the EMG, and then if we're using EMG as a proxy for hypertrophy, which your favorite YouTuber is, that would mean that isometric contractions are the most hypertrophic. I cannot say that word, forgive me. And we should focus our training on that. And the eccentric portion gives the worst EMG readings, so that must mean it's the least hypertrophic, and we can pay less attention to that. Well, I'm sure you know that's completely the opposite of the truth. Like we've done long direct studies that show that the eccentric gives you the most hypertrophic stimulus and then the concentric and then the isometric, which is exactly the opposite of what EMG ratings show. That's a problem. <laughs> EMG readings show. All right, so there's a couple of big issues with conflating EMG results and hypertrophy. Well, actually with EMG results and activation even, but they are problems that occur even if it's done right. Now I'm gonna tell you some stuff I learned about how easy it is to do wrong. A lot of this I learned from uh, Dr. Mike Isretel from Renaissance Periodization. I'll link his video too if you wanna hear someone who really knows their shit talk about it and not just have this ape translate it for you. So where you stick the electrode on the muscle skews results to a significant degree for a couple of reasons. Now, you have no choice unless you're gonna surgically implant this freaking electrode into the actual muscle, which is a thing. They, do, they have like needly EMG probes, but I guarantee you, Ryan's not stabbing himself with one of these like EMG probes at different depths in the same place and then a bunch of positions along and then flexing it against the needle. Like, <laughs> he is too smart to make himself into a human pin cushion just for your clicks. So what you do is you pop the electrode on the skin above the the muscle you're trying to measure, right? But the sausage meat of your muscle does not stay lined up with the sausage casing of your skin. So one, you're measuring the electrical stimulus that after some interference is the stimulus for the muscle to contract. And then as it contracts, the direct fibers of the muscle that you were measuring have moved. And now you're measuring a different part of the muscle. That's one potential issue. Also, some muscle contractions happen from the inside out and some from the surface in. Obviously, a surface EMG is gonna favor the surfaced first ones. That's another potential issue. We discussed a joint angle, but the placement of the electrode along the muscle matters too. So Dr. Mike gives the example that if you whap an electrode up here on the lat, you might get a great reading in an active dead hang or like towards the top of a pull down. But by the time you get to the bottom, that section of the lat can't contract any further. So the reading isn't more intense. But if you put it on the other end of the lat, you'd see that the contraction becomes most intense at this last part of the range of motion because the whole lap needs to be shortened to be at that end range. So if you'd have done the test either way, like either up here or down here, you would draw completely opposite conclusions. Like test A, this end range is the most stimulative for growth, so you might as well only do that range. Or test B, well, the shortened state has the maximum contraction, so we should probably only do that range, you know? It's a huge degree of variance just based on where you put the electrodes. Also, surface EMG only detects what's directly under the skin. It doesn't penetrate deep into the muscle. It doesn't see through the muscle to any underlying muscles, which you might be activating, which might be growing, which you can still like push up on that outside muscle and make you look more jacked or, you know, get you more stable, get you stronger. And if there's a layer of body fat above that muscle, well, that's gonna mess with the results again. Like you could measure along the same muscle, but if there's body fat here, and there's no body fat here, well, you're gonna get a more robust reading up here, but it's got nothing to do with what the actual muscle is doing. It's just skewing your results, even though it's got nothing to do with what you're actually trying to measure. Now, I actually think Ryan's EMG machine is penetrating somehow. He said something to that effect in the video that I saw. I don't really understand, to be honest, but I'm, I'm, not, trying, I'm not trying to particularly debunk Ryan here. 
I'm just trying to give you some context to process the information that you get and putting Ryan on the thumbnail made you click my shit. More possible user error is crosstalk. If you're measuring more than one site on an EMG and the lead gets too close, you're gonna start, you're getting crosstalk between that cables. You read the cable as well as the muscle. It's difficult, man, it's difficult to do. And if I sound like I barely know what I'm talking about, you're right. <laughs> as per, I went to the big brains with my issues. I know that I don't know enough to do these tests. Dr. Mike says that these issues, these user error issues, happen more than you'd think in actual studies by actual scientists with actual degrees and experience. Do you think that your favorite jacked YouTuber who bought a machine, took a weekend course on it to say stuff to get you to click their shit is gonna do a better job? Because I think it's doubtful. It's actually one of the reasons that I like RP so much. In general, YouTubers are jacked and dumb. Some of us are less jacked than others. In general, scientists are smart and little, but like, Dr. Mike, Jared Feather, these are fucking swole dudes. Like, they've done it. They're, there's a dude there with a PhD and a world record squat. These people have got there and further. So they have all the getting jacked personal experience that your favorite YouTuber has, but they've also got advanced degrees in their getting jacked field of studies and have all the advanced knowledge that it takes to read further into the studies that you or I might sort of have a quick look over and be like, mm, sounds good. <laughs> so yeah, check them out. I've learned so much from them and I'm not a bottle builder at all. Very little that they say has direct application to me, but is fascinating nonetheless. Anyway, that's enough about my crush on Dr. Mike. Let's close this up lightning round style. You generally see lower EMG activity at longer muscle lengths. That might imply that the squeeze is more hypertrophic than the stretch. We know that this generally is not the case. If you aren't training with weighted stretches, try it. It'll mess you up. EMG is better at detecting active versus passive tension. So if you look at the result for a dead hang or something, you might be like, oh, it's useless for my lats. There's no engagement. When actually your muscles are enduring a crap load of hypertrophic tension, just trying to keep your arms attached to your body. EMG detects higher activity at heavier loads. So heavy singles must be the most hypertrophic, right? No, we know that's not the case. There's not enough volume of stimulus to make a difference to your physiology. And if you're comparing two exercises and you can use a heavier load on one, that's gonna give you a bigger signal. Does that make it more hypertrophic? Probably not. <laughs> EMG doesn't detect all the facets of hypertrophy. For example, metabolic stress. EMG measures electrical activity, which is completely unrelated to metabolic stress. So you could have this other thing going on, which is driving a lot of hypertrophy, but those sticky danglers, they just don't pick it up. Like the last few reps of a set are the most stimulating for muscle growth, but EMG won't show that and will actually show less activation than the first reps of the set because the signal it's measuring is less robust because of fatigue. So again, we could look at the data and just write off those last reps as non-stimulative when we know from long-term studies that actually directly measure the hypertrophy, that's not the case. So there you go, a bit of context, a bit of healthy, informed skepticism. I've ruined EMG for you. What now? Well, if you see a study that says this exercise is better than the exercise you're already doing, maybe read it as this exercise might be better than the one you're already doing. Try it out, why not? But if the exercise you're already doing messes you up where you want it to mess you up, I'll probably just keep doing it until it starts not messing you up as much, or it messes you up in places you didn't want it to mess you up, you know? Like if it starts upsetting your joints, or it starts interfering with your training somewhere else, well, maybe try the other thing now. But what do I know, man? It's all just advice. I'm not trying to tell you that X is better than Y, and as long as you're trying hard and you're better than you were yesterday, we're all winning, baby. Do me a solid like the solid I just took on EMG and people you probably like, sorry about that. <laughs> Consider subscribing. I don't know what I'm doing next, but I promise it won't be boring. Drop me a like, leave me a comment, let me know that I'm small and my dad never loved me, but whatever else you do, get them gains. Be well.